So, let's talk about what are the common issues with the introduction of technology. Uh, we've discussed a little bit at MIT some of the problems they've had, uh, some initiatives that don't always work as they want. So let me give you a few perspectives of why doesn't it always work or is it so difficult to make it work to really change the approach with education by using technology. Well, the first things that is often said to be the one of the issues is the teacher technophobia. <laughs> right? Of course this teacher is saying, I don't need computer, you know, I'm using very innovative techniques to teach, <laughs> leave me alone. Uh, and of course you'll get this technophobia that some teachers are they don't use computer themselves. So getting them to completely rethink their approach using technology can be very tricky. You also get uh, lack of resources. Uh, where teachers, uh, you know, some teachers want to do something, but they, they really don't have the resources to do it. Their IT department might be one person for the school, and they would really need to have like two people dedicated to that, and they, they just don't have that. And inst institutional conservatism, which is the one at the top, is, is often the other one that's a problem. So a teacher might have great ideas, great things he wants to do, but his school might not support it. It could be the district in the U.S. or the you know the school district, depending on how the school system is organized in different countries, that might not be supporting what you're trying to do. Uh, and these are often blamed as the you know a mix of these three reasons that make things not work. But interestingly enough, some places have tried to fix each of them. You see, like in Australia, the the, the Learning Federation deployed they invested like a quarter of a billion dollar in deploying these digital objects for schools. The BAFTA in, in the UK invested, again, hundreds of millions of pounds in doing things. Uh, and, and somehow it still doesn't completely happen. And in some cases, really, the teachers are all in it. They're, they're ready. They're, the school is all behind. They put resources. And it still doesn't completely work. And, and the question would be, why? Uh, well, let me give you, I guess, a perspective of why I think this doesn't completely work. I think teaching practice is fundamental. Uh, we talked about MIT. Well, it didn't work out because the teachers have to completely change their teaching practice. It's not about putting technology in a classroom that automatically things are changed. If you don't rethink the, the way to teach using technology, then it's not going to work. The other angle, which I think is not looked often enough, is assessment. Again, if we're trying to only bring technology in a classroom, and even if you try to change the teaching practice, if the assessment in the end, if the exams is still testing the same skill set from the 20th century, not the 21st century, then it's too easy for kids and teachers to go back to the old approach. Because in the end, you, we haven't adjusted our testing kids in most cases. We're still testing kids for the same knowledge as, you know, as before. But as I mentioned, the world of tomorrow, the jobs of tomorrow, are not about learning things by heart. They're about more understanding the context, more understanding judgment, how to deal with information, what to do with it. And we haven't completely adjusted our assessment system. Um, the curriculum, in most cases, IT and technology is one of these blocks. It's, it's a subject. It hasn't been <coughs> rethought how it impacts each of the whole curriculum. And often the curriculum is provided in books. It doesn't use technology at all. So the whole concept of technology hasn't been rethought in almost every country is within the curriculum. And if you put these three together, is IT applied in all of them in a, in a consistent manner? Well, the answer is absolutely not. So I'm not aware of any education system that I've really found a solution to really look, look at these three and completely rethink their system. And education in general is a slow changing system, right? It's, it's owned by government throughout the world. And you know, governments are not necessarily the most efficient machines in most countries, so changes takes time. Uh, and, and again, this is why you see, in my opinion, lots of initiatives have tried to put technology, but if you don't address these three, I think you're going to really, really struggle to really make it work. Other logistical issues uh, and organizational issues in deploying technology is, of course, data protection and privacy of minors, uh, which often is what I would get told by teacher, well, I cannot start using these. My kids are going to you know, be too public or some bad people out there are going to find them. And well, yes, we need to be careful. And I'm not saying 
you know, this is this doesn't have any danger. But it cannot just be used as a simple reason of not doing things. It has to be thought through, and we're careful in how we deploy things. Uh, but but there are ways to make things safe as well. Um, education organization are not software development houses. I think a lot of issues I see sometimes with schools and teachers is they try to do too much by themselves. They have great ideas and they try to develop things, but if they try to become a software house, again, they'll get back to this box of lack of resources because it's too limited what they can do by themselves. Um, so, in conclusion, again, technology is changing at a faster pace than ever in history, and I think you know, you've seen a lot of data that I've given you related to that. But the name of the game is not technology, actually. It's not so much putting computers in front of kids. That's not the critical thing that needs to be looked at. But it's a lot more how technology enables teachers to engage in new teaching practice. How the curriculum becomes a 21st century curriculum, and how assessment becomes assessment of 21st century skills. To me, that is the name of the game. That is what needs to be addressed to completely change the game in education. Um, and basically, we have these new Z generation, these kids born the computers in their hand. They love to play, they love gaming, they love to touch that, te that technology, they love collaborating with the technology. But are they really in a world where they feel welcome when it gets to school? Do they recognize themselves in the school? And in many cases, they don't. When you see 7,000 kids dropping, dropping out of school every school day in the US, you ask yourself, well, why are so many children not interested to go to school? And I think there's a lot of work that schools have to do, uh, but also teachers, also governments, uh, also IB, another education institution, working with the industry uh, to really come up uh, with a solution to this and you know, get our hand together and prepare the students for a world of constant change and make learning a lifelong habit. Uh, that's really the challenge that is facing all of us, and it's not easy to sort this, right? Uh, if it was easy to fix it, it would be probably fixed already. But it is pretty, pretty complex. But I think all these actors have to work better together. And overall, the digital age is here to stay. And change will only accelerate, by the way. You saw some of these statistics. They will be faster than that five years from now. Trust me, technology is not going slower. It's going much, much faster. We get new things coming out now so fast, right? I mean, I, I just bought my latest gadget, my little iPad here, right? And, uh, so now I'm actually carrying three mobile devices, right? All connected on 3G. I have my Blackberry, I have my iPhone, and I have an iPad. I never thought I would be carrying that many devices with me. Who knows, maybe in five years I'll have some antenna here. Right? But it, it, it will just accelerate at the point. Uh, and education will, drast will drastically be transformed. It's only a matter of time. These digital Z generation kids, uh, tomorrow will be teachers. The day after tomorrow, they'll be principals. And three days later, they, they'll be minister of education. They will look at education from a very, very different perspective. So I think we need to get ready for them. And uh, let me finish with a quote from uh, Stephen Heppel. It's the death of education, but it's the dawn of learning that of course, I am Canadian, maybe I didn't say that at the beginning, so I am Canadian, so I had to put some maple leaves. <laughs> uh, but you can see these beautiful maple leaves, uh, which are dying, they're changing color when they fall. Um, so they're kind of dying, which to me is the image of education is in the traditional approach, is, is really going to go to, you know, to, to die eventually, in my opinion. But you see all this green around it, all this new life that's coming out, which to me is this new approach of learning that children expect us to evolve education to. And to me, I think it's, it's a very exciting time. I think there's a lot of things. We are at a turn you know, of, in, in the history of a, of a big, big turn in time. Uh, and I think education in a few years from now will be very, very different. Uh, and let me finish. This is actually my canvas, my overall, everything you've seen today fits into this picture. Uh, so I was just moving a camera between all these little things. Uh, if I, I, you know, I'm a musician a little bit, but I'm a very bad artist. And with uh, so some people can actually make pictures out of these all these slides, but I'm not good enough yet to do this. Uh, but it, but it gives you a perspective of what crazy is, which is just this concept of canvas and you're moving around. So that's all I have for today. Mm -hmm.